We have reached the last lecture. That is for the hydrogen atom. Until now, we studied the relativity and the birth of quantum theory, and they are closely related because the interpretation of photoelectron. In photoelectric effect, we have to we have to assume the existence of a light quantum that is called photon. Then energy of the photon is related to a parameter for a wave mechanics that is the frequency of the wave. The h nu, where h is the Planck constant, determines the energy of the single photon. And that idea was extended to include uh, by making use of the propagation speed relation. The speed of light is uh, wavelength multiplied by the frequency. We immediately obtain the De Broglie wavelength formula as soon as uh, we replace. The rest mass in the relativistic on-shell condition to determine the relativistic energy of the particle. So, due to the interplay between the quantum mechanics and relativity, we were able to guess the wave equation satisfied by a particle satisfying the wave mechanics. The beginning point, at the beginning, we have made use of two conditions. Uh, first of all, ignoring any interactions, the free particle state is assumed to satisfy the wave equation of monochromatic wave. That means monochromatic wave uh, propagating along a single longitudinal direction can be understood as a simple form that is a plane wave solution exponential i kx minus omega t. And in order to extract the particle nature properties, we obtain momentum and energy out of the free particle wave function by either taking the time derivative of to a over a factor ih bar or applying the gradient operator to the free particle wave function and then multiply h bar over i. In such a manner, we constructed a wave equation satisfying the total mechanical energy relation that can be derived in classical theory. This is energy. Total mechanical energy is the sum of the kinetic energy and potential energy. Then replacing the kinetic energy operator with the, the derivative operator involving gradient, that is uh, minus h bar square over 2m del square, that corresponds to p square over 2m, which represents the kinetic energy in the Newtonian theory. And then Potential energy is uh, the same as the classical one. In the case of reading the energy from time-dependent part, we take the time derivative, partial time derivative, and then multiply IH bar to obtain the energy. The resultant equation, wave equation, is called the Schrodinger equation. 
And for the simplest case, we have considered the free particle in a certain region and accept that there, there, is, there are two rigid walls through which the particle cannot penetrate. Such kind of infinite potential wave problem gives us a very basic idea of quantized energy level of a bound state for a particle satisfying the wave mechanics. The solution for the Schrodinger equation for the infinite potential well has the momentum which is the multiple of a certain wave number that is pi over L. And that is the ground state. And above that, the wave number is n, time, n times a pi over L. So wave number is, uh, is no allowed wave numbers construct a set that has one to one correspondence with the integer. Because wave number is proportional to a, an integer, the kinetic energy that is a wave number squared multiplied by h bar squared over 2m, the uh, because the particle in an infinite potential well is uh, actually a free particle in the region where the existence uh, is allowed. The kinetic energy is proportional to n squared. So if there is a transition of the state among all allowed states, the emitted photon carries the energy h nu where the frequency can be determined by the the difference of the two squared integers it is rather artificial and when we studied the black body radiation the atom was assumed to vibrate at a a certain temperature in equilibrium. If you solve the quantum theory for the satisfying the wave mechanics under the potential energy that is a one half kx squared, the solution is rather different, but the n dependence, the quantum number dependence of energy is a linear instead of n squared. Now we have reached the point to consider the uh, much more complicated bound state that is a hydrogen atom. Hydro hydrogen atom is a uh, consist of the nucleus that is a single proton and an electron. The basic the fundamental interaction that makes the bound state exist is the Coulomb force. Proton has elementary charge in a positive sense, and the electron in a hydrogen atom has the elementary charge with negative sense. Therefore, the two particles attract each other. According to classical electrodynamics, based on the Maxwell's theory, the electron rotating around the proton nucleus, it's accelerating. Its uh, speed is uniform in classical theory. It requires an acceleration. For example, in uniform circular motion, 
there is a force toward the center of the circle. So electron oscillates. It's ma it make a uniform harmonic hammering motion, and the acceleration generates the electromagnetic field. That electromagnetic field propagates everywhere. This eventually, this the energy of the system dissipates. Because of that, the electron must lose its energy and must go down to a lower radius, a smaller radius. As time goes on, the acceleration is magnified because the distance between the proton and the electron increases. Finally, the electron must collapse into the proton. However, if it is the case, any hydrogen atom and any any matter that consists of the nucleus and electron electrons must decay. But that is not observed. Our current universe uh, must decay. That's nonsense. So classical theory arrives at a stupid conclusion. However, we have some proof. If the particle stays satisfied the wave mechanics and the state is uh, constrained to a bounded space, then just like the vibrating string of a violin, its energy is quantized. Perhaps that's the reason why proton does not annihilate. At actual observed spectra of the hydrogen atom are uh, four, and in case the there is a larger energy coming from the upper, the larger radius to the ground state, uh, results in the large energy. So that is related to the smaller wavelength. That is up above the energy of the violet. So ultraviolet results in non observation with our bare eyes. So, anyway, in 1913, Niels Bohr introduced a remarkable idea to explain the hydrogen atom spectrum. He proposed a very classical model. However, he restricted the angular momentum of its hydrogen atom to be satisfying a relation of multiples of something. The de Broglie wavelength of an electron is a multiple of multiples of the de Broglie wavelength is the length of the circumference of the orbit. This very striking idea gave us a very accurate values in comparison with the measured data for the hydrogen atom spectrum. Nowadays, we do not, uh, we not, we do not uh, leave it to be true. The, the final result is uh, the same as the actual observation. That is a wrong theory. However, it is uh, still worthwhile to look at his derivation, although it is, uh, it is wrong.
But, but as because we we do not have uh, enough uh, ability to attack the quantum mechanical problem for the hydrogen atom, it is too much complicated for the undergraduate student can solve. So we first look at the model of Niels Bohr. The model is as follows. The electric charge of the proton is a plus E, E is the elementary electric charge, and that of the electron is minus E. And Bohr assume that the electron is following the, uh, making a uniform circular motion. So orbit is, for simplicity, orbit is a circle. Assumption is that the angular momentum is quantized. Angular momentum is angular momentum L is R cross P. And the direction will be if if it is a plane angular momentum it will be along this direction. This will be R and momentum will be along the tangent direction. The cross product will be normal to the plane on which the circle, circular orbit is present. So if we say it is a, along the z-hat, unit, unit vector along the z-axis, then it will be z hat r and mv. And in uniform circular motion, velocity will be r omega. So m r square omega will be the angular momentum along the z hat. If he introduced the quantum theory, wait a second, we can also write it m v square z hat. This is also true because of V equals R omega. He first tried this. Sure, it is uh, very difficult to notice it immediately this will be the solution, but he, he, sh he should have tried the various, uh, uh, various methods of quantization to have the reserve uh, quantized energy level. But among, among them, this one should be the simplest uh, assumption that results in the same uh, energy spectrum, the hydrogen atom. And then he used Newton's second law, F equals ma, and the force is toward the center, and the origin of the force is the electrostatic force and Coulomb's law of force is applied, and because it is making a uniform circular motion, he used circular motion relation for mv squared over r Wait a second. This this should be oh, this. this M R 
omega okay there was a mistake that's enough we do not need this because in the rotating in a rotating frame of rotating with the angular frequency omega the radius if you know the radius then the velocity is omega cross r and the acceleration is omega cross b so this r omega theta hat and this is a minus r omega squared r hat and r equals r r hat okay so the previous result the last line was wrong that this one is enough and with this result acceleration is a minus r omega squared toward the center using this m a can be derived m r omega squared r hat or here minus m v squared over r r hat so this is this is the force relation for uh, if a particle is under a uniform circular motion this one must be satisfied and then angular momentum mr squared this is m here mv is the linear momentum rmv this one this one mrmv this is the angular momentum in the Newtonian mechanics he used the quantization condition nh bar in here then you we can divide r and m both sides the velocity is determined to be nh bar divided by rm using this we can determine the radius r here r squared and this is a single r so we can solve this linear equation you know, this equation so r equals this one so called the ball radius there's a spelling is wrong bore So the radius coming from this constraint is called the ball radius, and this is uh, this is uh, identical to the the radius that we can obtain after rescaling the Schrödinger equation for a hydrogen atom. And here, the ball radius appears here again the radius of the hydrogen atom for the quantum state n and runs from 1 to 3 4 any the positive integer the radius we can put a subscript of n so that the radius for the nth quantum state <coughs> is uh, proportional to the ball radius and the coefficient is n square. We can compute the total mechanical energy of the system that is sum of kinetic energy assuming that proton is a very heavy proton is a very very heavy sure we can include 
the effect of reduced mass for two-body system to increase the accuracy. The sum of kinetic energy and the potential energy. And one can <coughs> substitute this one and we recall that we, we learned the video theorem of equation to find out the value for this. So everything will be the same as this except that the factor 4 is replaced with A. And we substitute the radius depending on the ball radius. The final result for the energy level is proportional to 1 over n squared. We remember that the infinite potential well problem, energy level is proportional to n squared. However, in the hydrogen atom, whose potential is 1 over r, the energy difference, energy level of each state, quantum state, is proportional to 1 over n squared. That is absolutely consistent with the, the Ritter formula. So we, we can reproduce this simple idea of a quantization condition for the angular orbital angular momentum reproduced the energy spectrum relatively correctly. Although although the fundamentally wrong starting point began in the theory began with the wrong, wrong basis, but practically it's relatively correct. It's still useful for the naive uh, derivation. We can, based on the relativity, the energy of the system can be scaled in terms of the rest energy of the electron. Uh, the rest energy of the electron is mc squared, is a 0.51 so, mega electron volt. And proton is a 938 mega electron volt. It's almost 2,000 times heavier than the electron. We can improve the Calculation by including reduced mass, that is the product divided by the sum of the two masses. But because there is the mass difference, the, the factor of almost 2,000 difference in the two different mass scale. So it is, it's a, for us, it is enough to consider small m, the electron mass only. But if you consider the reduced mass effect, that is uh, electron mass, rest energy, 0 0.510998, 0 0.510 the same, but there's a tiny difference, the 7208 MeV. <coughs> okay, let us go ahead. Let us recall the infinite potential world problem. The quantization of the bound states in the infinite potential world can be explained in this way. The, there's a potential wall and it is infinite and three particle between zero and L. We learn that the states are quantized as the states with n equals 1, 2, 3, all positive integers. And here, n equals 0 is impossible because the wave function disappears. When the wave function disappears, the probability, probability of finding that particle also disappears. And the complete wave function is sum of these and C n represent the probability of finding that state 
uh, cn divided uh, cn squared divided by ck squared sum over k k runs from the one to infinity this will be the probability of finding the state n Because wave number kn was n pi over l, the momentum of that state can be obtained by multiplying the reduced Planck constant. The value is h over lambda, and we can find we can substitute h bar equals h over two pi. So we can read off the wavelength of the state, quantize the state n. Then that is the wavelength is 2L over n, where n runs from 1 to infinity. We can find the ground state has the longest wavelength. This is a half of the wavelength. Actual wavelength is a double of this 2L is the wavelength when n equals 1. And n equals 2, more wavy, 3 and 4, and I have drawn until 5. Okay. This is x-dependent con contribution. And actually, that is when t equals 0, x is given like that. What happens if t is not equals to 0? That is, everything is the same. C n phi n x multiplied by Exponential minus E and T. Time oscillating, time dependent oscillating factor must be multiplied, but there is N and N dependence. The energy is proportional to N squared. The oscillation, time oscillation is uh, very fast. And it depends on the frequency of oscillation is different from different that differs or uh, depends on the integer n. So oscillation is different for this guy and the other guy. All right. We compare this quantization for the infinite potential well case and the ball ball model. In ball model, angular momentum of the nth quantum state is R P, that is n h bar, and n runs from one to infinity. We multiply 2 pi. Then Rp equals nh over 2 pi. 2 pi r momentum nh. So 2 pi r is a circumference of the circle, circular orbit. So P equals linear momentum is NH divided by the circumference of the circle orbit. We can find the Broglie wavelength. This is H over lambda. We can read the wavelength of this electron is to the circumference divided by n. 
Aha. So n equals one. N equals one is just, just one one term. I can you see a circle? <coughs> I can draw a circle of radius, unit radius. This is not a circle, but understand. This guy is outside of uh, unit circle, and this guy is inside the unit circle. So it is uh, very similar to the boundary condition problem, boundary value problem for the infinite potential well. However, however, in the infinite potential well problem, the wavelength, as far as the ground state is concerned, the wavelength is just the two times, two times the width of the potential well. That means that uh, the wavelength is just the width of the potential well is the half of the wavelength. However, this is a periodic boundary condition. It returns to the same point and then repeat the oscillation, uniform circular motion case. And in this case, a circumference is the wavelength. And then the, the, the first term, the ground state, has that condition. There is no factor of 2 in here. And then it's just we consider the multiples of, multiple of, of this condition. So the periodic boundary condition is quite uh, interesting. It is strikingly, strikingly different from the boundary value problem for the, the fixed space. So the con quantization condition can be interpreted in this way, the circumference wavelengths the longest wavelength is the wavelength at uh, which the wavelength is equal equal to the circumference of the circular orbit. This is a repetition we we recall the video theorem, detailed calculation for the average kinetic energy and potential energy. And total mechanical energy calculation is reviewed in here. Next, we consider fine structure constant. The energy of the nth state, energy of the nth state is given in here. We use the rest energy of the electron. Rest energy of the electron is mc squared. If we substitute those measured value and the exact value for the speed of light, what we obtain is a point, point 0.510 and so on, mega electron volt. Then the energy of the nth state is based on the previous formula we, we, we just have obtained from the Bohr's model. We'd like to scale, rescale this energy in terms of rest energy of the electron. That means we can we pull out mc squared as an overall factor. Okay. One half minus one half mc squared is the unit we, we use the, because minus one half comes from the 
period theorem. Then what we find is uh, e to the fourth, this, uh, this is the squared value of the electron ele elementary electric charge divided by two epsilon zero hc squared. Then we call fine structure constant. And this fine structure constant is the most accurately measured number in human history. Sure, this is not measured anymore. This is an exact number, speed of light. But the strength of the electromagnetic interaction is parameterized by this fine structure constant. Okay. The strength of the electromagnetic interaction is actually determined very accurately by the atomic transition and by the measurement of the wavelengths of the emitted light in the transition of the hydrogen atom. The relation to the Rydberg constant is uh, again in terms of the fine structure constant written in here. It's quite simple. Rest energy of the electron multiplied the fine structure constant squared, one half is multiplied. That is, that reproduces the Rydberg constant of 13.6 electron volt. Now, actually, the, the theory of Bohr's model is completely wrong. We'd like to consider the problem in terms of the Schrodinger's equation by solving the wave equation. When we construct the theory for the hydrogen atom, we must Respect to energy conservation, right? Energy conservation is uh, respected because the Schrodinger equation, the Schrodinger equation, comes from the energy conservation. Hamiltonian is plus potential energy. X vector. The second theory must accept complex wave number. Right. Right hand side we have the double derivative with respect to the coordinates, but left hand side to find out the Hamiltonian, that is the total mechanical energy, we we had to take the single derivative. So it's It is naturally the complex number. Third, wave function with real num wave number is sinusoidal like LC circuit or simple harmonic oscillator. Wave function with the pure imaginary wave number is exponential as a solution of RC circuit. RC circuit has the decay damping or saturation, so charge or discharge, that, that has the exponential factor. So wave number with pure imaginary wave number gives exponential not minus i omega t and the e to the i kx. This is oscillating either cosine kx or sine kx. However, if wave number is complex, it is a pure imaginary, then we have minus kx, plus minus kx, something like that. It has an exponential factor. However, the wave function squared integrate over the space must be finite, except for the case of a free particle that is not bounded. 
as far as the boundary system is concerned, wave function squared integrate over the space, so it is always finite, and we have we usually make a unit normalization too. So in order to satisfy for the wave function to satisfy the case, in case the wave number is imaginary, the pure imaginary, it must decay. It, it must not grow exponentially as r goes to infinity. Instead, it must decay as r goes to infinity. So the wave function for this kind of one, the full on potential, has the exponential decaying uh, evanescent factor in it. The wave function psi tx depends on coordinates and actually we can solve this problem after replacing this one with uh, by applying the separation of variables because uh, the operator time dependent operator and the spacer dependent operator they are summed it can always be solved by replacing this wave function as a product psi of x and t of t so we end up with the time independent uh, shredding equation and once we can solve this time independent Schrodinger equation, we can determine the energy eigenvalue, the characteristic value. And because this system is bound as long as E energy E is a negative, this energy must be negative because the Coulomb force gives a potential less than zero. So this is the finite well. It, 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 as R goes to infinity, the potential energy of the Coulomb interaction approaches zero. So just above zero, if we have energy like that, then it is not bounded at all. It is a free particle. The energy levels of the hydrogen atoms are determined in this way and as n increases, they are the, the lines are almost the same. I mean, it reaches a very tiny separation between nearest neighbor. Anyway, as long as the energy is less than zero, there is a potential and there is energy in the region it is oscillating in the region where potential is higher than the energy it must decay this wave function must decay exponentially so something like if we have some potential finite potential well your wave function is way be way be in here in the middle and decays in the case as r goes to infinity something like that and the next state it is a more wavy something like this we have observed this kind of uh, behavior in the middle wavy behavior in the infinite potential well ground state is this next the excited state is this more excited like that more wavy the way the wavelengths becomes shorter in here always total mechanical energy is greater than the potential energy however outside outside that region because the infinite potential well has the infinite potential energy it cannot penetrate anymore but if the wall is a finite it can penetrate, however, it decays, it decays. Okay? So, 
hydrogen, hydrogen atom wave function is way b near the center and as we go far away from the proton they must decay all right So, in quantum theory, we make use of this time-independent Schrodinger equation by including the potential, the potential energy of the electron in the hydrogen atom can be expressed in, in this way, and mu is the reduced mass then more correct calculation we, we use this uh, reduced mass and r is the distance between the electron and uh, proton so it is quite difficult to solve this problem and you have to first uh, learn the classical mechanics to classify the dynamics of the two body uh, system in under central force such as uh, gravity or electrostatic force and then you have to learn quantum mechanics to find this this Schrodinger equation reduced to several pieces for example it is not convenient to use the Cartesian component, the Cartesian coordinate x, y, z, instead the system has fundamental parameter r, the distance between the proton and electron, and because it is rotating, it's uh, better to use the spherical polar coordinate, r, theta, and phi. You will find in the questions that this Laplacian operator can be expressed in terms of the derivative, partial derivative with respect to the radius. And there is an additional piece that represents the angular dependence. And if we carry out some tedious calculation, you will find that is related to the square of the orbital angular momentum, L square. That depends on the polar angle theta. And then, if something is rotating about the z-axis, you, you will find it is a related to the z component of the orbital angular momentum and finally you will find the Hamiltonian is expressed in terms of derivatives of r and l square that is the square of the orbital angular momentum and l z And actually, LZ do, uh, does not appear explicitly in this expression. Hence, the operator is uh, depending on R and uh, depending on theta. We can introduce separation of variables with r, theta, and z. That is, to say psi of x is a product of radial wave function and polar angle dependent piece and azimuthal angle dependent piece, product of these three. And in the, at the end of the day, you will find this guy satisfies the equation 
L squared theta equals H bar squared L L plus one. If we make use of this fact and this guy is L Z psi a phi is an M H phi. We say L to be the orbital angular momentum quantum number. We say M. This is the Z component, determines the Z component of the orbital angular momentum. And then energy's level of the this guy is determined by the en total energy level. The, uh, neglecting any other inter uh, any other interaction except for the electrostatic force between the proton and the electron, it is uh, completely the energy level is completely determined by this quantum number, so called principal quantum number. I do not want to uh, solve this problem. We 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 are not ready for solve this uh, Schrodinger equation. It's, if you are in physics major two years later, you, you have a chance to solve this problem explicitly. All right. So energy level is uh, determined like that. Using the complete solution, we can go ahead with uh, analyzing spectrum. Hydrogen spectrum is a Lyman, Balmer, Passion, N prime, N prime, N prime. This to the ground state. So from a state to ground to the ground state, this shift from a fixed state. And two, the n equals one is requires the biggest energy. If it's going down, the photon is being emitted. The frequency should be the highest. Two n equals two, principal quantum number n equals two. The energy difference will be less than the previous one. By extent. It is visible. Two two Balmer series, two n prime. The final state quantum number n equals two gives a visible light. And n equals three. Now the energy gap is smaller. Very interesting to see. Two n equals two is visible, and the Bigger energy, shorter wavelength, so larger frequency, that is ultraviolet. This is a visible. And then it is a infrared. It is not always true for any other cases, but for hydrogen atom, it is very interesting to see the visible with uh, our bare eyes, UV and IR is not seen with our bare eyes. Let us summarize what we have obtained. Energy levels are negative because potential energy of the U or potential energy of the electron trapped in a hydrogen atom is negative. So total mechanical energy must be negative. If it is not the case, it is above, then it is a free particle, it is continuum. It is not a bound state anymore. Next, the energy gap decreases to reach and increases. From a certain energy level to the energy level, if we increase the energy level higher, the amount of energy to should be emitted is decreases. 
e infinity equals zero. If we increase at a quantum number, it reaches zero. And it, it, if, if the energy, it, energy, total mechanical energy is above zero, it is not a bound state anymore. Transitions are caused between quantized energy levels by emitting or absorbing a photon. Okay. A collection of absorption lines is a spectrum. Line spectrum. All right. So, the basically, basically the energy level of the hydrogen atom system is completely determined by the principal quantum number at leading order. However, the fine structure constant is once uh, we measure measure the the energy difference uh, very accurately, it is uh, slightly different from the value of what we have seen because uh, there there are perturbation. Perturbation is the additional contribution coming from other interaction. that shows the existence of the spin of the electron. And, and that actually spin and orbital angular momentum couples to make a total angular momentum. And that, that slight difference will give additional contribution. And finally, we, the people have found that the leading contribution coming from the principal quantum number is not really exact one. So, but we need a very hard work to find out the more accurate result. That result in uh, development, complete development of non-relative to quantum mechanics. In addition, it is extended by including relativity. So Dirac equation appeared by considering the relativistic effect of the electron. But let me stop, stop here uh, because it is too, too much difficult for us to understand what's going on there. The next one is orbital quantum number that determines the orbital angular momentum. Principal quantum number one of, appears in the energy level formula for, that is proportional to 1 over n squared. Orbital angular momentum quantum number determines the square of the orbital angular momentum that is proportional to the reduced Planck constant square, h bar squared. And you, you need to learn quantum mechanics to find why, why this uh, L, L plus 1 appears. It is uh, related to the solution of the resound the differential equation. Okay. But a very interesting point is that the orbital angular momentum quantum number is restricted to certain range and it begins with a zero that is called S wave. And next one is the L equals one that is called the P wave. And then L equals 2 is D wave and so on. And it stops just below the principal quantum number, that is n minus 1. So there are n multiplicities, n multiplicities in the orbital angular momentum quantum number that give the same energy level for, for a given given principal quantum number n. In addition, even though the magnitude of the orbital angular momentum quantum number is fixed, its z component is still free, but that, that is not continuous, that those values are quantized again, and those values are min from minus L, that is determined by the orbital angular momentum quantum number L, so that runs step by step, just a single step. 
it runs from minus L to L. And that one, ML, is multi-magnetic orbital magnetic quantum number, ML, runs from minus L to L. There are two L plus one multiplicities. There are N multiplicities. In addition, I just I have what I have told. There is another angular momentum that is nothing to do with the, the motion, this orbital motion. Without motion, electron at rest still has the magnetic moment. That means, I don't know what happens, but simplest way of interpreting this one is a spinning. Not running, but it is spinning. Due to the spinning effect that we do not observe inside, it is impossible to see inside the electron. It is too tiny. However, we use the word spin because if this orbital motion is due to R cross P, it should move with some radius. Without the orbital motion, electron itself at, at the rest frame does have a magnetic dipole moment. That is determined by the magnetic spin angular momentum quantum number S that is either plus one half or minus one half. And magnitude of this is determined by S, S plus one. That means S, S plus one. Magnitude is four thirds, uh, uh, three fourths. It's a Z component. It is, I should remove this. The magnitude is one half. The Z component is either plus one half or minus one half. This determines the Z component of the spin angle momentum. All right, so the wave function of the hydrogen atom consists of the radial part that is called a radial wave function. And the angular part is called the YLM, function of theta phi. And this is a function of r. This is this is just product of a theta, thick theta of theta and the thick phi of phi that I just wrote in the previous page. And the probability of finding an electron in a hydrogen atom system is determined by our constraint that wave function squared integrated over space. This is the three dimension over the space should be one. So this one is for the angular part. This one is for the radial part. If I re uh, write down the volume element in R theta phi coordinate system, Spherical polar coordinate system, it is r squared dr d theta and sine theta d phi. And actually, r, r squared 0 to infinity and theta 0 to pi sine theta and Ojimubla angle, 0 to 2 pi. This is this represents the volume integral and uh, lower and upper limits of the, those uh, three parameters. Therefore, therefore, the probability density can be integrated in, in this way. However, if L equals 0, L equals zero is angular dependence disappears. L equals zero is S wave. Simplest case, if you consider S wave case, 
the wave function does not have any angle angle dependence. In that case, S wave case, angular integral is just a solid angle, four three dimensional solid angle in the Euclidean space. Therefore, we end up with the integral that is solid angle multiplied r squared dr. So this determines the probability of uh, probability of uh, finding an electron in the space, and because the hydrogen hydrogen atom has a single electron, the, if we integrate over the all of the space, you end up with the result one. In here, we notice the this ground state wave function has the shape. PR is actually in here for pi radial wave, wave function squared R squared. This R squared comes from the Jacobian, this Jacobian. Because of this R squared, it decays, it vanishes as R goes to zero. In addition, I told you if the energy, the potential, the zero, I should remove this. Electrostatic potential is like that. And at some energy level, outside the point, classical turning point, quantum mechanical turning point does not exist. And in the classical turning point, outside the classical turning point, energy, the total mechanical energy of the system is below the potential. That means when the energy is below the potential energy, then what happens? The wave function decays. The wave function decays as R goes to infinity. All right. Straker harmonics represent the angular dependence theta and phi that determines that determines the L square value of L square that is determined by the orbital angular momentum quantum number L L L plus one h bar squared and that also determines L z that is m ml h bar the z control i told you that if this one runs from l runs from 0 to n minus 1 and this guy runs from minus l to l this one has a multiplicity n multiplicities this one has a 2l plus 1 multiplicities anyway speaker harmonics is a quite interesting function and we i have displayed uh, the uh, magnitude along the direction, the theta and phi, in a uh, three-dimensional plot. You don't have to understand it completely, but as far as uh, wave mechanics is concerned, higher energy level wave function is always wavy. The ground state wave function, there is a no angular dependence that is spare excited states so wavy structure appears as we go higher and higher more complicated structure appears just like what we have seen for the ground state for the infinite potential well very simple but higher state wavy this is just a 1d problem but in 3d three-dimensional problem Radial wave function decays at r goes to zero and r goes to infinity, and angular part, either theta or phi, they are wavy as we go higher energy state. So we we summarize this, and I told you the state states of electron allowed. For a given energy level 
is determined by the principal quantum number n. However, the principal quantum number n has many multiplicities. The orbital angular momentum can be can vary from L equals zero zero is missing so this one should be zero from zero to n minus one there's n multiplicities zero two n minus one what happens if I sum The high school student can compute this sum and the final result is n square. It is allowed to have n squared degenerate states for a, for a, a hydrogen atom with a principal quantum number n. But they have found that there are two more, the factor of two missing. Because of what? Because of the spin and the momentum is missing in here. So we must include the spin to the spin up and spin down states that explains everything, the chemi chemical behavior uh, very well. So the quantum mechanics the, is the fundamental theory for the chemistry too. You can follow these calculations for the higher states. This one shows the radial wave function in the higher state. You, you can see the radius, radius of the electron increases as the energy increases. And we will find more wavy lines for the higher state energy, the highest, highest state electron. As I told you, S wave state has a rotational symmetry, the distribution of the electron probability density is a very uniform, but the higher state is not uniform. You can see dense, uh, dense region and sparse region that is represented by this, the magnitude of the probability density uh, of a, uh, against the radius. Okay, so electromagnetism in combination with uh, relativity and quantum mechanics, your uh, physicists were able to explain the spectrum of the hydrogen atom, and this is the fundamental understanding that began with uh, began around around 100 years ago but the electromagnetic interaction is only for the photon and it does not explain anything about why the proton there are so many protons in the nucleus if we consider only the electromagnetic interaction it is impossible to explain so close positive charge that densely placed in a tiny region. The world, the, the, this nature could not exist. But electromagnetism is, is only the first that we are familiar with. The other one is the gravity that before the electromagnetism, we, we only knew about the gravity. Earth is going around the sun. They are very similar in structure. But the nuclear structure, the phi structure, is not explainable, cannot be explained in the electromagnetism. That's the reason why particle physicists studied the fun more fundamental uh, theories, and they, uh, they have found that nuclear interaction is uh, based on the weak interaction, and strong interaction. So there are four fundamental interactions, gravity, electromagnetism, and weak interaction, and strong interaction. They govern the whole nature. OK, thank you very much for uh, watching the 28 lectures in the for General Physics 2.
I hope your study of physics in this semester may help your future life with a better understanding of physics. Will help. Good luck. Thank you.